special guest with me today. It's Nate Bowling from PlayYourCourts.com. Nate, what's up, man? Hey, buddy. How are you? Good to see you. Virtually. Yeah, you too. Yeah, really looking forward to this conversation. So recently I was scrolling through YouTube and I uh, was watching this video here from Player Courts and it's called Nate's Comeback to Competitive Tennis Part 1. I was actually watching uh, Part 2 and I, I, I've since gone back and watched uh, Part 1. And Nate, I love, I love what you're doing here. I, I sent you a text right away because I just identify it really, I identified really strongly with it because you and I are pretty much in the same boat. We're both in our 40s. We, we both had our heyday you know, a long time ago in terms of players and we've since become coaches and now we're right. trying to pick up the player racket again and work our way through you know, injuries and fitness and just figuring out how to be respectable <laughs> on the court again as a, as a player after spending all this time as a coach. So I thought it'd be yeah. a lot of fun to kind of sit down together and talk about it and give some ideas to our audience about how to be more successful as we get older. So we're gonna jump right into it, but first, can you please give us like a minute or two of background on yourself as a player, as a coach, and just let everybody know where you're coming from and what your experience is like. Yeah, happily. Uh, so, man, when I, when I was a wee little lad, uh, four scores and <laughs> seven years ago, <laughs> an eternity ago, um, I, I grew up as a competitive junior, uh, nationally ranked. Um, ended up my senior having this pretty gruesome accident at severing like my right arm and Really, I, I won't get into details, but super gnarly oh, injury. Man. But um, ended up uh, playing some D three ball, walked on to uh, some D one tennis, and then suffered. Really started the the kind of the the gauntlet of navigating uh, injuries, specifically with the the, the playing arm. Um, but was fortunate because it, it kind of lit uh, a passion for the inside of the game. You know, when you kind of have these physical capabilities that are limited and that's, you know, what you identify with, I had to think of the game on a different level and really started appreciating the pieces of, um, of what happens behind the scenes, you know, what, what, what the coaches are doing. And as far as, you know, technique and the mental game and strategy and everything else. So I entered the coaches world. Um, and I think like a lot of coaches, like early on, I mean, it's, it, it, a little just just shy of 20 years w w with coaching and in a full-time profession for for a little over 15 years you know when i started it was like i i love to play i mean i love tennis so it was i wanted to teach tennis i wanted to come home and break and watch tennis and then at eight o'clock yeah. at night i play with a buddy and that lasted for like six years um and you know between uh, having a, a, a wife and then injuries that were creeping up it just became too much and you know coach or teach excuse me playing took the back seat yeah. and uh honestly and in the last like three years i've tried over and over again where i'm like i really miss it i want to get back into playing and i'm not talking about just like you know coming out and hitting like playing competing like there's a definitive outcome there's a score uh mm -hmm. and just Injury after injury, you know, in the video, I talked about the the hip and the back. Um, those, those, the, the hip was a large one. Um, but I'm finally in a place, getting pieces put back together to where I feel solid. And uh, I just want to get back back to playing. Um, you know, we, we are launching this bracket challenge. And uh, I told Scott, I was like, we should play in it. You know, this bracket challenge, it's going to be yeah. wide. And I was like, how cool would it be? It's one thing for us to offer this surf service service where people can come in and play, but I was like, why don't we play? Like, how amazing would that be if we got to interact actually with, with a, a, an audience, you know? Um, so, so that I was like training for that became kind of an, a, an idea where I was like, I'm going to put it. the wheels in motion to get back on court. Yeah. Similar, similar for me. I, I wasn't like a high level junior and, and I, you know, kind of barely walked onto my college team. So for me, walking onto my college team was like, huge accomplishment for me but similar like i had huge passion as a junior for tennis i just kind of started late my family didn't really have the funds you know for me to do the whole high performance junior thing so when playing took a back seat for me to start becoming a coach there was always that little voice you know in the back of my head and you know year after year after year you wonder like do i still have it you know could i could i go back and play the way that i did before and could you talk a little bit about what that's been like for you experiencing well a could you give us a little bit of context like you said you've tried it kind of a couple times but had the injuries kind of pop up 
how long of a stint are you currently in and really kind of making a, a concerted like push or effort to get back into playing and what's it felt like for you after having that experience and that passion as a young competitor like in your you know in your prime athletically what's it like to feel those like competitive feelings again at your age now it's so multifaceted right it's um it's exciting but it's just immensely frustrating some days. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think we're probably alike in the same where it's like our mind knows what to do and, and, and what we want to yeah. do it. Body limits it to where it's like, I want, I want it now. Right. Like I'm and, and honestly, I've had a setback. Um, I haven't, I haven't done much in about two to three weeks, actually since that, yeah. that video, two days after that, the back fired up again, but it was exactly yeah. that. Like I, I just went after it too fast where it was like, I'm going to do two days, you know, I'm back in doing some yoga, I'm doing some PT, which your yoga course has been really helpful, like really cool, nice. like direct to the point And like, in, I'm, I'm kind of using the stretch part um, in the morning now, like just opening the day with that yeah. routine. Um, but, but definitely um, it's, you know, the, the mind wants one thing, the body's going to deliver another. And that's the piece that that's, I've kind of come to terms with where I'm like, it's just little wins every day, every day. It's like, whatever I, even if I don't get on the court, if it's just doing core for 20 or 30 minutes, it's one step closer. And I think that's where there's a little bit of peace right now. Nice. Yeah. I like that mindset. And I feel like, you know, as coaches, that's something you and I probably preach to our students constantly is like, you gotta be patient, you know, give it time. Uh, but it's a lot, it's a lot more difficult when you're trying to, you know, kind of receive your own guidance, of course, uh, your own coaching. And so, yeah, thinking back, for, just for context for everybody who hasn't been following my match play videos, my training videos, it's been, I think about 14 months, no, probably more than that, maybe almost a year and a half, about 16 months or so. And I would say for me, the first probably three or four months were really touch and go. Same thing as you're describing, it, it, was, it was like, day to day, I might feel like, oh man, this is the best I've felt. And at first, like the first month or two, it's like every next day is like the best day you felt because you just haven't been training or hitting, you know, you don't have the timing, you don't have the fitness. And so when you're really competitive, like sounds like you are and, and I am, it's tough not to push yourself too hard. Um, how are you managing that? Um, how do you, what kind of reminder, like practically speaking in the moment, like on the court, how are you kind of managing that uh, disagreement between the internal voice that wants to go harder, wants to push, you know, stronger, but the kind of the physical reality? It's, it's two voices, right? And, and I'm sure you run into this <laughs> as, a, as a coach, right? So there's, there's this very analytical side, and that's the voice that's actually the most problemsome. Um, you, you, I think people have this kind of the general idea that when you become a, like you're coaching, you're on the court all day and it's improving your game. And, and we'll, our brains switch, it, it switches into a different direction because we start looking for problems. Um, it, it becomes very analytical and it's, it's hard not to turn that inward. I'm laid on a forehand. Ah, oh, man, what is my, where's my elbow thinking yeah. about the backswing. And now like you're, you're trying to like practice reps and you're, you're thinking technically, and that piece, you know, it, it, that'll drive me crazy. And it's like when we're when even when I was full time on the court, forty or fifty hours, you know, I, I feel like everything I, what I was improving was like utility skills. Volley got better, chip got better, lob got better. But like, you know, ten percent of my lessons was I hitting a, a, a semi western forehand. So it's like the all out that that kind of got dulled down. So yeah. when I can put the analytics kind of side, the, the you know the professor of it, and, and overthinking what I'm doing because that's it, that's what it is. It's overthinking. Um, the physical component is that's a, that's a trust issue. It's like getting pull, getting pulled to the outer thirds of the court, and we're physically. I think you know when we were kids, it'd be like, I will kill myself to get this ball. And yep. now you can feel the, <laughs> the how limited, like you, you're like, I just don't want to get hurt. And now we might actually play. die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like I could fall and break my hip and never play. Yeah. Like it yeah. starts entering that realm. And I, I think it's that little voice that's that's afraid. And it's it, you, you get trained that way. You get you get injuries that that take you out of the game and you just don't want to get injured again. And that that 
you know, that part of it's really difficult. Yeah, for sure. So I, how are you like in the moment or, or how are you kind of getting yourself to kind of pump the brakes a little bit? Any, uh, any practical like reminders or is it just like minute by minute by minute you're, you're having to kind of remind yourself? Well, before um, each session, and I'm, I'm just scathing the surface right now, um, I'm, I'm giving myself just little goals, right? Where nice. if you keep the ball deep, if you're keeping the ball relatively deep, you're not, you shouldn't be doing a ton of running, right? So it's like, I'm going to control what I can control. Like, can I, can I keep the pace in the ball? Can I keep the ball heavy? Can I keep it deep? Um, you, you know, obviously when the serve comes in play, you can't stay in control of every point and you have to accept those losses. Um, but I, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to every ball that I can. And then I, I, I definitely, if it's a foregone conclusion, I'm, I'm letting some balls go, which I hate to admit, but mm. the goal is to see the six month mark, the year mark. It's not, it's not about winning every single point right now. And that's a tough mentality mm. to swallow, but to stay on the court, I think that's where I kind of have to be. Yeah, I love that that uh, uh, idea of like being big picture mindset. Uh, have a having a big picture mindset instead of like needing to uh, prove to your own ego like shot after shot after shot that you still have it or whatever. Um, I think that was maybe the hardest part for me was just wanting to prove. I didn't really care so much, even though I was publishing everything to YouTube. I didn't really care so much if you know. Joe user, you know, on YouTube was impressed with like how I was hitting, but I wanted to like, there was something in, inside of me that I wanted to prove to myself that if I want to at age 40, if I really, you know, pushed myself and really worked hard, like I could still play for me good tennis. And that, that was it kind of, it sounds like similar to you. It took me a little, at least a couple of weeks, probably a couple of months before I, I allowed myself to kind of let go of, of that and just enjoy being there instead of having to make everything perfect. And uh, is that, does that kind of sound familiar? I mean, one, definitely kudos to you. I mean, what you're, what you're doing is groundbreaking and I don't think people maybe quite understand how difficult it is to, to take the relationship of the coach and the player and separate them and then still be, you know, relevant in the one, one, one pays the bills and the one is just this self-fulfilling thing. But I yeah. do feel like there's a lot to learn from the player piece of it. I think people watching and seeing the, the obstacles that we face and everything else that they can start to be encouraged. And, and that, you know, to be a, a, a really good coach, you don't have to be fetter. You don't have to be, it's um, we're all battling. We're, we're all on the same team. You know, Peloton has their tribe. It's like at the end of the day, we're all, we're all in this tennis community. We're all in this same thing together. And if we're playing for ourselves and we just, we want to continue to grow in anything in life, you know, I recently started trying to learn Spanish. I'm horrible at it, but I'm trying because I want <laughs> to do it, right? But it's like, it's the same thing with, with tennis. Like I, I like the challenge. I like that ability to learn. And, you know, you're really the first one to say, hey, like I'm going to show you this aspect of it. And I think that's amazing because there's so many coaches and forget YouTube or, or anywhere else. I'm, I'm talking about even boots on the ground coaches that they won't even they won't play they won't compete because they're afraid if they lose to Johnny at the club next door will people take lessons with Johnny and it's it's really a yep. shame because we're advocates of the sport and that as an advocate of the sport you can't you can't fall into that line so so kudos to you man I think that piece I've enjoyed it uh, I mean it definitely was motivational for me watching you uh you know just go at it get back on the court and awesome. battle. Uh, that's great. Uh, thanks. Thanks for telling me that. I, I appreciate it. Um, so, <sighs> lost my, lost my, I, I'm not used to getting uh, so many compliments. I appreciate it. Lost, uh, lost my train of thought uh, a little bit. So, we haven't uh, talked oh, about the, your beard yet. So, don't, don't, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the beard. <laughs> yeah, beard, uh, beard <laughs> grooming tips. Yeah, facial hair, hair grooming tips coming later. Uh, but not from me, from, uh, from Nate. So, oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've been doing it on video. And I'm curious to hear your perspective from somebody who's gener you know, generally career-wise, like it's been your profession. People have looked up to you as a, a resource, as, a, as an expert, as a, a source of knowledge and, and information. What has it been like for you to make that transition over into like training mode or like I'm going to be a player mode? And then kind of second part to that question, 
actually watch it back later. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've watched your own, or maybe you haven't. I shouldn't assume that. Do you watch your own yeah. training sessions? Um, so what's, actually, it, what's that experience uh, like? Yeah, I filmed, we filmed today and I actually did a review on, um, on what I saw. Um, you know, I think it's, it's, it's entirely different. You know, I touched on before that. I think coaching, you have to be completely selfless to be a good coach. It's not about pride. Everyone you work with, you, you hope they're better than you, right? Like that's the coup de grace. Like they're better. You've done your job, and and playing is one of the most selfish things we can do because tennis is that's a one on one sport, right? I mean, it is. Yeah. There's no passing the ball. There's nothing else. So like it, you have to own it, and you have to be, you know, you have to almost be a little bit arrogant. Um, and that's a very different hat than being a coach. That those two don't align whatsoever. So that part I'm, I struggle with, um, but I'm, I'm, you know, moving away from when having been out of the game for a year, when I was getting out and kind of testing the wheels, it was definitely like we, we play kind of hitting games amongst friends, you know, beer tennis. Um, and now I'm kind of getting back to where I'm just trying to really stay focused um, and, and want every single point to, and not overly engage with, you know, that particular video, Mark and I were having a good time. It was day one. I'm now before getting the little bit of a setback, getting to where it's, it's um, there's, there's less hit and giggle. There's more like I'm a hundred percent in on, on what we're doing. Um, did I answer your question? I feel like I went off on a tangent there, Ian. I, I, I don't know. As far as, as being, you know, kind of in the limelight and, and people having expectations, man, I, I, my past was my past and it took me a long time to accept that. But I mean, mm. I'm comfortable with, with who I am as a player. I, I was a, a good junior. I had a, a, a decent college career. I made the most of my tennis game after a, a pretty horrific uh, accident with my arm. And, and now I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I pride myself in being a coach. And, you know, if I come back as a player, whether that's a, an intermediate or advanced it's I'm, I'm i'm doing it because i enjoy it i love the game and i hope it helps other people learn from it i think that's the win at the end of the day right yeah i'd love to drill a little deeper on that uh topic with you because i think it's a trap that a lot of tennis players fall into where psychologically and it's totally you know understandable and i, I love your description by the way of like very very selfish versus very uh generous uh, being a player versus being a coach, you're, you're, I totally agree. Like you do have to be selfish and kind of greedy, you know, on the court. Like it's your, uh, every ball is your ball. And when, in particular, when you have a family, when you have a career and time is precious and you're out there for that hour, you know, training, like you have to leave everything else and just focus on you, yourself, like your development, yourself as a player. And so, I think it's easy to fall into a trap for tennis players, no matter what level, like whatever, 2-5 or 5-0 or 5-5 or, or whatever, to fall into a trap of being after day after day and year after year, after you know, a certain amount of time focusing on yourself and developing yourself, it's so easy to start taking it so seriously. And, and for me, that's when I started getting really unhappy uh, in the past. And that was one of my personal challenges for myself this time around was can I take it seriously again and uh, like truly like push myself and go hard but maintain my happiness and my joy uh, around the game and, uh, and not get to the point where I started uh, being such a perfectionist on the court that I just didn't like it anymore. Um, does that resonate with you at all? And how, how are you viewing this transition back uh, in terms of that kind of trap that tennis players fall into of taking it so seriously? Yeah, I mean, so when I was a junior, I mean, I had every aspiration. I thought I'd be on tour, and you know, yeah. I think I think that's part of the arrogance <laughs> piece, you know. And it, it's not, it, it, it's just you have to kind of feel that way, you know, in order to, to to want to get out there and train five hours a day and everything else. And then there's a moment. There's, you know, for me, it was I was playing in a, a in a tournament um, my senior year of college, and I mean, I just got thumped and. I realized the difference. It was just yeah, eye-opening. Yeah. <laughs> totally. I was like, oh. I was like I'm, I'm not, this whole world is so big. And yeah. <laughs> I'm so small in the tennis world. And, um, and, and 
for me, I think because of the arm injury, I was already at, I knew where I was going to be. I knew that I, I wasn't going to, I was severely limited and it, it kind of gave me acceptance with it. So I had kind of an early eye opening experience with it. And that's when the, the, the transition into the, the coach's piece. But let's face it, like you said, like we're both super competitive. And I don't care if I'm, you know, 18, 44, or it's 84, like I, I want to win. And so that piece, um, staying happy on the courts is letting go of expectations for me. You know, well, I, I talked about it in that video. It's, it's, um, you know, I, sometimes I think I had a, sh- I have a shot, like I, I'm, I'm set up and I miss a ball down the line, opening up, hitting it as absolutely hard as I can. I'm like, how do you miss that? Well, the, the truth is I haven't made that shot in like three years. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So it's like I'm looking back to like what, when I was playing, you know, competitively, when I was a junior, when I was in, in college. And it's like I, I, it's just those things change. And I, I think my mindset has been do do what you can. And, and the little goals for me are, are everything. Um, working on first serve percentage, making sure that I'm doing everything I can to put returns back into play, attacking when my feet are inside the baseline or at the baseline, you know, playing with depth when I'm four or five feet behind the baseline. Like those things I feel like eventually start making better decisions and will give me the confidence that I need. But I, I can't I can't get all pissy when I miss a shot that I really shouldn't be going for. So how, how about are you? you? I mean like are you like me? Did you did you used to get pissy? Like, did you used to be really hard on yourself? Like, I went through a period where I, I got really negative. Did you like go through that when you were younger or not really? I mean, my my mom and dad may watch this, so I, I can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> As a junior, I was awful. I was so I mean, like like the fifteen year old range. I mean, just awful. And and the problem was is that when I was winning. I was everyone's best friend. I was the best version of myself. And when I was losing, yeah. I was the worst version of myself um, because it was everything. I, I, I loved it. I was blessed in the sense that, you know, I, I had a dad that surfed and I still avidly surf and he would kind of give me the break of like, hey man, like waves are good today. You don't have to go to practice. And that was like a nice out. My mom was very supportive, but emotionally I was, I was so uh, invested. But going back to the arm injury, when that happened, um, I, I mean, I played, I played my senior year of high school left-handed and I played my first year of college with two forehands and serving yeah. underhand. Um, so it just changed. I wasn't good enough to be a hothead anymore. <laughs> yeah. So it's like currently that guy comes out every now and then where like a good racket toss is still in my repertoire, but, um, <laughs> but I'll laugh about it. I'll smile and be like, yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, like yeah. I'm not I'm walking off the court upset because i didn't win or whatnot so for the players like that are in our communities online and and come out and work with us in person you know as as coaches and watch our videos and and that sort of thing i I really resonate with what you said about having that that like formative experience it sounds like you had a couple you had the one with your arm and then you had the other one as a senior in uh, college where you had that realization of like holy crap like i all of a sudden understanding your place you know in the in the game i totally had that experience as well it was just shortly after college uh for me where i I realized like oh (laughs) you know where i actually uh fit into everything what's your what are your thoughts how do you translate that to a 45 year old 50 year old uh, adult player who never had that uh, chance, you know, a, as a junior player or a college, po- uh, college athlete. And now they're picking up tennis as maybe their first sport and they're like 10 years into it and they're starting to have that experience of maybe taking it a little too seriously or get too, too hard on themselves because they're pushing themselves so hard. How do, you, how do, you, how do we translate that um, lesson over to that type of uh, adult athlete? What, what are your thoughts on that? how to get them to rein it in you mean like to to find the i just have that same like epiphany of like um understanding the perspective of like the game as a whole um and like our place in it and and so we have a greater appreciation of where we fit into the the bigger picture does that does that make sense yeah um, i mean for me working you know whether it's a college kid um a beginner you know an adult or a junior doesn't matter um 
if we're for me playing tennis for the right reasons is is one of two things you know obviously it's a great social sport to exercise and everything else but it's a it's it's an inward sport and if you're playing for yourself and you're playing for the confidence of it the self you know the, the you set a goal every time we step on court and and it's as long as you're reaching those goals it's good and but there are you have to accept the losses and i think for a lot of players that you, you know they kind of they, they end up being kind of the trophy chasers right um and all they all they can think about is is their next trophy and every time they come up short their personal identity becomes part of the art of part of the trophy yeah. it's it's hard to rein back um, and, and it's hard to talk to them. But as far as the greater scope of thing, I always remind them that, you know, the, there's the top 20 in the world and then there's kind of number 21 and then a hundred. And then there's everybody else in, in the scope. The magnitude of this ecosystem is so massive that, you know, we, we all want to have the same goal of getting better as good as we possibly can, but we got to keep, the expectations realistic. Like what, are, what is our end goal? Like maybe you're three, five and you want to be a four Oh in the next year, give it two years. Why make it so finite? Like why give it such a micro, give it a macro. Um, so for me, it's always identifying goals and then having hard talks with people about, is that goal realistic? Is yeah. it something that, you know, you can attain because uh, I'm, I think we both have counter plenty of players that we work with um, that are like, I want to be a five Oh. And, and the truth is, it's really, really difficult to be a five zero, and, and you've. Tell me about I, it. I've seen thirty year olds that have, have dedicated <laughs> themselves to it and made it happen. Yeah. That they just started playing at thirty, and they made it happen by like 40, 45. But it's there's a career behind that. There's a pedigree behind that. Hmm. Yeah, uh, let's sh shift gears a little bit. I want to go back to you. You brought up stretching, uh, you, kind of body preparation. It sounds like you're just starting to experiment with yoga a little bit. Um, and yet you've, you've had some setbacks and I, I did too. I had, uh, I, I'm, I, I, I've been wanting to go back through my early videos and just watch, like, I, I'm sure you can see like the frustration on my face. Cause it's like, it was just like a revolving door of like neck or back or, or foot or, you know, ankle, shoulder, whatever, until my body finally kind of got up to speed again. How are you managing that kind of ramp up? Uh, period, like physically, what's what's worked the best for you, practically speaking, to kind of feel as good as possible? Yeah, so I guess going back to where, you know, the overdoing it, that, that happened pretty quick out of the gate. So so just to back up, I guess, with it or early on, so two years ago, um, or I guess I actually almost three now, was the the discovery of the hip, the FI um, impingement, the, 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 the socket, all that good stuff. Um, and that just, that sidelined me. Um, I got back into it. All of a sudden it was the back and uh, the back was a long layoff. So that's, that's been about a year. So mm. a lot of PT, um, a lot of core training, but what I realized too, Ian, was like a lot of the core stuff I was doing was wrong. You know, you get set up with a doctor or a physical therapist rather, and, and you work through it and then you get home, you do it on your own and then you're overarching, you're overextending, you're actually inflaming the back. Um, so started having a lot of problems there. Um, but enough time off, I felt good. So I got back on the courts and I just went at it and ended up in the same place. My approach this time is I'm almost doing like periodization, um, like a professional would. I'm spending a substantial amount of time in the gym and getting the body right before I even hit a ball. And then when I'm getting on the court, it's, it's all very slowed down. Like I'm, I'm working through just making sure everything feels right, making sure the footwork is, is, is falling into place appropriately then ramping it up competitively, but, but also being okay, putting myself in a situation to where I'm okay saying that's, that's good for today. Um, and that's tough to do. You know, you, you get out there with a buddy and they've allotted an hour and a half to get their reps in. And at 45 minutes, you're like, I gotta, I gotta pull it. Something's up. I gotta pull it. Mm. Um, so we were talking a lot about yoga. I mean, that's, that's fairly new to me. Re really enjoying that. Um, our social media director has, um, We've been talking a absolute ton about, you know, different Pilates and, and things like that. So I actually have my first Pilates private lesson next week. Um, nice. So right now I'm all about the core. It's all like build the core and then build outward from there. Hopefully that holds up. We'll see. <laughs> I, 
I, I'm praying for you. <laughs> what, what I, so, I hope so too. What, what was your, I mean, like, cause you, your ankle that set you back. I mean, that was, that was kind of out of the gates, right? Yeah, that was probably, um, it was about two months in, uh, to the whole process and like the whole intention of, I'm going to ramp up and push myself and, and see, see what I got, you know, see what I can do. And in hindsight, I, I had the same realization that you just articulated. And that is I went too hard, uh, too fast. And I could, I can tr basically trace that injury back to a combination of uh, like a bunch of different things. My eyes and hands not being up to speed yet. Um, like, I don't know if you can picture like w when I hurt myself, I was close to the net and somebody hit a passing it. shot right at my face. Oh, it was bad. Yeah. It's... And I was like a split second behind, like on the split step. And so I was basically still on the way down from the split step when I realized I'm going to get hit in the face if I don't do something. And the edge of my foot caught and I like pushed like against it to try to move my body out of the way. And so that happened because a combination of several things. It was late in the second set and I was just overall physically tired. Like my whole body was, was just behind in terms of my ability to put out that kind of intensity for that amount of time. So my whole body is tired. My timing with my feet is a little bit late, a little bit off. My eyes and my hands are responding a little slower than what I would like them to. And so you, you like stack up all those things and it was kind of like bound to happen at some point, some way, like I was probably gonna end up hurting myself. And so it wasn't until probably a couple months after that when like I, I na like naively, I kind of expected that I could jump in in the deep end. I hired like a high performance coach in the area. I was like, man, I'm just gonna have him push me super hard. I'm gonna run for every ball until it bounces twice, just like I did, you know, back in the day. And I'm just gonna like ramp up super fast. And uh, similar, it sounds like to you, that just resulted in and me hurting myself in lots of various, you know, different ways, because my body just was not attuned and primed and ready for that kind of intensity after years and years of not doing it i didn't i took for granted how hard i had worked for for how long you know exiting college and, and going into like my mid-20s and 15 years later uh you know looking back you know wistfully on those years you just kind of assume that well I, i'm still a hard worker like i'm still i still have that that competitive you know like i've still got the the fire in my belly so if i just push myself hard enough i'm gonna get right back there yeah. and i it's didn't like understand you think the chapter is just oh look, i'm moving on picking up from 15 years ago it's all good uh, yeah 100 i mean yeah if you had asked me i wouldn't have like literally said that out loud but my actions basically mapped to that you know attitude uh, and so, it's, it's, I, you, you don't want to admit it, but it is. It's like, I can do this. I'm, I want it. Totally. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Not, yeah not I, anything else. I was, I was looking at it like it was maybe a two or three month project. And in reality, you know, looking at it now, you know, I'm, I'm like almost a year and a half in and I realized that to maybe get, I, I actually think I could still play at that intensity level and, and that uh, amount of like strength, balance, stamina that I had in my 20s. But now I understand it's like a two to three year project and not like a two or three month project. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's right. You said something in a video, um, I don't know, maybe a month ago that, that really resonated with me where you were talking about I can't remember if it was a match or you were uh, or practice, but you were talking about being too ramped up and then being too ramped yeah. down. And that's yeah. definitely something I, I experience as well, where it's like I get too keyed up, where it's like in tennis, I don't think we talk about it enough. You can try too hard. It, it's not wrestling or boxing like exertion doesn't produce an outcome because it's 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 a it's a you know marathon. It's not the sprint. And that's something I've definitely run into is like. You know, I'm like, hey, just relax, man. Like, be fluid. Be, you know, Martin that I'm hitting with in the video who doesn't even tie his shoes when he hit. I'm like, <laughs> like serious. Like, has not tied his shoes ever in a competitive match that I've witnessed. Uh, he has big feet, but, uh, but like, just, I'm like, just be smooth. And then it's like, <laughs> I'm scarecrow and I'm not even bending my legs. Like, and then you try to get, you know, you ramp it up. But for me, the ramping up is the dangerous piece because that's when the injuries occur. And it's almost as if to, to your, to what you're saying, it's like, it's, 
you ramp up in the energy, it's, it's mentally exhausting and then it's physically exhausting and things get tight and they get rigid. Next thing you know, you're going down for a low volley and the back is gone or whatever it might be. But that piece I think is, is something for every player to be aware of. It's a third gear, right? We don't want fourth. We don't want second. Can we just idle there in that third gear? Cause that's the sweet spot. Yeah, I, yeah, that was a huge um, unnamed obstacle that uh, I, I never came up with that before. I came up against that before, you know, in my past. But, but after, you know, a decade and a half of basically taking off from competing and, and then jumping back into it again, kind of in the deep end, I was just so, like, excited to be competing again. And especially with, like, you know, the cameras around and the the uh we do uh commentary you know booth and i was just so excited to be competing again that uh i was going zero to a hundred it, it wasn't so much like the physical taxation and like burning myself out uh it was more so that uh because i was just pegging like the the red line i had no ability to control what the heck i was doing and i was just like you, like you said, like super tight, super rigid. I had no smoothness or flow to my swings. And I, I, was, I was just like spraying balls all over the place. And I'd be like, okay, relax, calm down, calm down. And the, but then I would lose the edge I needed to be competitive with the person I was playing against. And so, yeah, it was probably like a solid two, three months um, yo-yoing like back and forth in matches before I started to kind of um, f- uh, find a middle ground a little bit. That, that was tough for me, it was super challenging. Yeah, I think that's something that's uh, that insight's good, though, because I think people have a hard time, you know, vocalizing like what that is. But that's exactly it's the energy is uncontrolled, too excited or too, you know, not excited enough. Uh, But that was it was interesting watching that because I was like, yeah, man, I I know. I know that feeling. I know that well. So um, hoping to get back. Sorry. That's yeah, that's exactly what I was going to ask. So tell us tell us what's next, uh, Nate, like what's. You're, you're relatively early still in this journey of jumping back in. So what do you see down the road? Like, what, what are you hoping is going to happen uh, six months from now, a year from now? And how big is this project? Like, are, are you thinking, like, age group, you know, whatever, regional or national tournaments? Or is this just kind of like a more a personal um, a personal thing you're doing just for your own enjoyment and it's not going to go you know big outside of your your own hitting and your own competition yeah so it started personal it, it definitely um you know I'll, I'll tell you just a, a quick story i had a buddy that was putting together a softball team and he asked another mutual buddy who you know played like uh triple a like a really good baseball player and he asked him if he wanted to play he's like never playing softball i'm i'm I, I, I was at the apex you know i was i was an elite player in my sport I'm, i would never bring myself to that and i was like but it'd be it's but it's fun it's a good time and and it for whatever reason you know his answer it kind of resonated with me where it's like i think we get caught where it's like we we f- for for us having a history and playing, you know, we get caught with what we used to be. And then therefore, because we can't mm-hmm. be that, we just don't do it all. And no. I, I think that's a, a, a awful mindset. I enjoy it way too much, just way too much. And I, and I don't want to bob and weave, you know, um, you know, I'll play once a month because like, what, what are you doing if you're playing once? You're never really growing. So it started off personal, just I want to get back out playing. Um, and then when we started putting together this idea for the bracket challenge. Um, it's, it's essentially, I don't want to call it a league. I think that underserves it. Um, it, it's this cool concept that's going to allow everybody from state to state, um, to compete in a local, you know, locally, regionally, then state and then national. And Scott and I got so keyed up, like putting this together. I was like, how fun would it be to play? And then I, I caught myself where I was like, why, why wouldn't I like, because, is there a preconceived notion? Like what's the worst case scenario I play? You know, I, I, I travel to the state over, even maybe locally I get drummed. People are like, well, I'm not listening to that guy coach anymore. Look, that, I should take lessons from that guy that drummed him. Like that's worst case scenario, right? Like that's, that's kind of how I think the public perception is. And I realized like it, how, how re- 
ridiculous that is and how difficult it is to be an ambassador of the sport and, and talk to our coaches to put those things aside when we can't do it. If we can't do it ourselves, how can we possibly work with the student and be like, don't worry about what the captain of that team says or what, you know, just play. So that's where the idea came where I was like, I want to, I want to play in this bracket challenge. Uh, and Scott and I are both going to do it. We're going to play locally. Um, and as it advances, if we advance, we'll, we'll play, you know, potentially audience or, or whatever else and, and try to document a little bit out, out, out of it and, and hopefully get back onto what would be like a, um, you know, a, a little tour, you know, that between USTA and UTR, there's a lot of stuff out there. But I think the, the end goal of all of them is like you can navigate and test yourself against multiple other humans. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, you have a, you have the carrot. And I, I, that, that's what I, that's the goal right now is to stay healthy enough that I can play several several matches a week to be back in a playing shape to when I go and go, OK, this is legit. This is a challenge match. It's a tournament um, that I feel adequate <laughs> yeah adequate. i totally hear you well i no. i was uh, fortunate enough to go to midwest regionals on the the four or five team that i i played on this this past usta season and i man i can't tell you how how fun and gratifying it was to you remember the college you know days y'all pile into a a van and uh everybody's bags are in there and it's it's way too small and you got the camaraderie and like the joking and making fun of each other and then you, you pile out of the van and you go play a bunch of other guys uh yeah. you're cheering for each other and you know you got each other's backs and that sort of thing all kind of fighting for a common you know common goal and to be part of that kind of team you know travel com uh, competitive environment again it brought back so many good memories and uh i enjoyed it and just like every minute of it uh and to feel the extra pressure you know the extra stress like it is one thing to play on camera on my own court against somebody but to go to a a third party you know a, a neutral uh place and to have a team you know watching me and hoping that i win because we want to go to nationals and hopefully ian doesn't blow it uh, that extra layer of pressure also like it was so it was so much fun to be part of that so so i'm lo i'm looking forward to hearing you uh talking about that nate because it's like late it's like layers you know of, of challenge and i'm really happy to hear that you, it sounds like you learned your lesson a lot sooner than i did on the uh the ramping side of things so so i'm really looking forward to seeing you continue to document it and hopefully have those that kind of like ladder of experiences going back to uh, the good old days of uh, team competition or, or pers you know, individual competition too. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's the win, right? And uh, it, it's, I hopefully gets back to a point where, you know, it's like you said, you, you're playing for it, man. Like you've got the ball. What are you doing with it? And, and embracing yeah. it and, and not being disappointed that you, you know, just, just being happy to be out there and, and to compete. But uh, we'll have to get sure. you down here. Maybe we'll get some, some tennis going. We'll have to get you down here to, Virginia Beach sometime and, and get some tennis. Um, yeah, I'll be to talking you. to you guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you guys have like five feet of snow right now. So I think I think I'm going to sell you on the Virginia yeah. Beach piece. <laughs> it was below zero just a couple of days ago. And uh, yeah, not fun here right now for sure. Um, can, can you shift to your right a little bit, please? You're just a little bit yeah. out of. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I'm totally going to come down by you guys. I'm, I'm start, I'm in the early stages of planning, uh, kind of, a, a tour around my book, uh, launch in May. So I'd like, I, I'm thinking about doing like a road trip all around the country and stopping at different YouTuber, uh, tennis YouTuber locations and like doing le playing, uh, shooting lessons or playing matches or doing training sessions or whatever. So, uh, so you guys that. are definitely on my list. We'll, we'll make it happen for sure. Yeah. We'll, we'll show you a good time. I'm sure. I, I expect nothing less out of you and Scott. <laughs> by, by chance we play the night before, really. really good <laughs> We're playing first, yeah. Uh, well, Nate, please, please let us know where, where's the best place. Obviously, playyourcourt.com. Um, everybody watching should be subscribed to the Play Your Court YouTube channel uh, to fun. follow along with, uh, with Nate and his journey. But also, you know, just to be able to take advantage of all the great resources and lessons. And uh, you, you guys are starting to do like some tour news uh, reporting and and stuff like I, I, it's been fun to watch you guys experiment uh, with your content where besides YouTube and the website, anything else that you want to make sure to, to plug? No, I, I think those are great. Um, and, and look, be on the lookout for the, the bracket challenge. We're hoping to get yeah. that up and running about February uh, in March. Um, 
and that'll be you know local tournament play. I think it'll be a little bit different, but uh, no, that's it. I really appreciate you you having me on and and sharing your experience. Uh, I'm a fan of what you're doing, and hopefully, I can stay healthy to to uh, to, to follow those paths. I'll be I'll be hitting you up to get some advice um, on the ramping up and ramping down as we go along. Yeah, of course. Yeah, anytime. Well, I really appreciate your time a lot. Uh, thanks for taking time out of your day. Uh, I, I know uh, people are really going to enjoy hearing your insights and uh, continuing to watch and, and see what you learn as, as you push yourself forwards. Uh, so thanks for sharing yourself, Nate. Uh, thanks for, for giving us your time. And we'll be seeing you on the YouTubes. Thanks so much, man. Thanks for having me, Ian. Pleasure. You bet. Take care.